Hello. Oh, well, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're still in Orlando, but this time we're staying at the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress Resort. So, let's take a look around. <laughs> walk into this room now this is a standard king room here I do think they have queen rooms and they do have a couple other suites those were kind of booked for this stay so we're in just a standard king room so keep that in mind now when you first walk in the door there is kind of a it's a bigger foyer area you know it ebbs and flows at different hotels but this one was adequate uh, right when you first walk in interesting to note there's no lights there's no lights in the entryway which I think is kind of strange I don't think I've stayed at a hotel that didn't have a light at least in the entryway right by the door so that was kind of strange moving over here this is gonna be the bathroom we'll go in here next um, but just stick around for that the rest of this foyer area is kind of interesting the um, there's a sliding door for the closet and it shares it with the bathroom. So if you want to close the bathroom door, you open up the closet. It's a little weird. It's a little kind of not functional, but it is what it is. Up here is where the extra pillow and blanket was. They're now on the bed. We do have a luggage rack. We have some hangers. We have a safe. We have an ironing board and we have an iron. You know, the standard things that you're going to find in almost every hotel. Next up, we're gonna go take a look at the bathroom. So right over here is that entryway that we just talked about. So we come right in here and this is the general bathroom area. It does have a rainfall shower head and it does have an extra handheld, but I will say the knobs on the shower is probably one of the most confusing showers I've ever had. And I couldn't, it, it took me a minute to figure out how to turn it on and how to turn it off and get hot versus cold. It was a minute. It took a minute, but I will say I do like the fact that they have a shelf um, because it does fit most of our stuff on there. And then the vanity area is nice and large. Um, the lighting is, it's okay. It's okay lighting. It's definitely a little bit more on the warmer side. And they do have one of the, you know, magnifying mirrors. And we do have plenty of space to store our stuff, which again is nice. They do have lots of hooks which again, is something you don't always see. So we try to take the pluses with the negatives. And then back here is actually where the toilet is. There's no door um, for the toilet area. It's just kind of like a little tucked in corner. And again, if you wanna close off the bathroom because you want a little privacy, you're gonna to have to open up that closet. It's a little weird. As I mentioned, this is the little weird toilet alcove. There's no door, so it's a little strange, but it is what it is. So next up, we're gonna go take a look at the main living area. So right here is the main sleeping area. It is a king size bed. The bed, in terms of comfortability, is kind of middle of the road. It wasn't quite as bad as Hilton, but it definitely wasn't as good as Marriott. The pillows, definitely more on the dead side. It is an older hotel, so I don't think that they change out the pillows as much. And weirdly enough, our bottom sheet wasn't a fitted sheet. It was just a regular sheet that was tucked into the corners to make it look like a fitted sheet. So that was a little weird. I haven't seen that really ever. I think I've only seen it in one other hotel. So it's a little strange. On both sides of the beds, there are lights. On this one, it's like a sconce that hangs from the ceiling. And on that side, it's a lamp. There are outlets on both sides. This side has a weird alarm clock that has extra plugs on it. And that one has a lamp that has extra plugs on it. They both have um, little cubby holes that you can kind of store your stuff in. Pretty standard across the board. The hotel phone is over here and so is the alarm clock, like I said. Sometimes they divide it up and put one on one side and one on the other side. Eh because of the switch oh yeah there's a triple switch is what gary said it is which means that three-way switch. switch yeah you explain that so there's a three-way switch on the 
the thing that turns on the uh, light in the closet over here and then it turns on that light over the bed. So if you didn't stay on that side of the bed, you wouldn't be able to turn off the light when you're going to sleep. Which we experienced the first night. We were really like, this is a bad design. Take it for what it is. Over here on my left side of the room is going to be kind of like the center point of the room. It does have drawers. It does have a little fridge over here. I have a feeling like at one point they probably stocked this with like snack bar items that they no longer do. And then um, the coffee maker and all that stuff is down here on this side. They do have USBs and plugs here in case. So that's probably the most updated I've really seen in this entire room. There's another telephone over here on this workstation. We do actually have a really large TV, so I'll give them that. That's actually kind of a plus. I do enjoy that. But the lighting in this room really struggles because there's, again, no overhead lighting anywhere in this room. We have a fan, which we absolutely love, which has actually saved us every night that we've been here because the air turns off from about 1.30 in the morning till 6.30 in the morning. And with stagnant air, it gets kind of warm, especially in Florida in August when it's really warm out there. So again, the room's not super great in terms of functionality, but there are a couple of things that they definitely got right when it comes to the design of this room. Over here, we have the couch pullout couch. So there are extra sheets and you can ask for extra pillows, but if you need an extra bed, you can definitely get that from this couch. There is a stand over here. So if you wanna set your drinks or whatever, you have that over there. And then down in this corner is actually the work workstation um, that functions more like a desk. And Gary's been using it to edit future videos for your enjoyment. Again, the functionality of this room is really very 90s early 2000s in terms of updating. It really hasn't been updated in at least 20 years, which is a little bit of a struggle for me, especially for the cost of this room. This room is roughly about $180 a night. It's a little much for the fact that it really hasn't been updated in quite some time. And as you guys will see, as we tour the rest of the hotel, it's it can be definitely dated in, definite, in, in certain areas of this hotel. So, that being said, let's go take a look at the rest of the hotel. So bonus tip two with this room, there's really nowhere for us to put our luggage. This is kind of weird. This is probably the first hotel where we really had our luggage out. Um, and it's just because there's nowhere to put it in the closet. There's not really any spaces in the room that they fit functionally. Usually there's one area or two that you can find in a hotel where you can tuck your things away, but that's not really the case here. So I wonder, do people really come here long term or are they just here for a quick weekend? It's interesting because I'm here for a conference, which is all week and so are a bunch of other people. So it's like, how do you make the functionality of this room work and still put your luggage away so you don't have to stare at it every day? It's kind of interesting. Next up, I'm going to show you guys the view. So here's our view. It's a lake. There is another view where you can kind of view the pools and the water slides. And I think there's a third view where you would get a view of Disney Springs. And it looks like right over there, you can see the elevator go up and down. That's where the elevator comes up and down. Yeah, it's an okay view. Uh, right over there where that big wheel is, that is I drive and the swing and the big, what we call the high roller in Vegas, I forget what they call it here, it used to be the I, the Eye of Orlando. That is what you're seeing over there. And then kind of panning over to the right is SeaWorld. And back behind us, which we don't have a view of, is Disney Springs. We're, we're right around the corner from Disney Springs, just to kind of give you a lay of the land of where this hotel sits. Interesting find here. So there's an ice machine actually on both sides. So this is one side, right? And then there's an ice machine on that side too. 
So no matter which side you're on, there are two ice machines on each floor. You know how we do. Your VD ice machine is at the end of the hall, farthest from the elevators. Well, this is a nice little ice machine. The elevators for each floor are set up like this. One back, three front, and then one back on the other side. A legit tip too is if you get here on a day that it's super busy in the lobby, you can't find a seat, you don't really want to explore the resort, and you're a smaller group of two people, you can come up to any floor and they have these little quiet areas right outside the elevators where you can just kind of sit, get away from the noise, relax a little bit, and wait for your room to become available. Or if you wanted to read and look out the window, there's some options for that too. Here's the other side of the resort. The lobby is down there. We are on the eighth floor this time, so there are a few more floors for us. Up there. Well, we're almost to the top. We're about probably a little over halfway. And this is what the hallway looks like. A lot more room than the one in Anaheim. You see that? There goes Nancy. And there's the elevator. And then you make a left. Or I'm sorry, you make a right when you're from the elevator. Left for us. There is the hallway to the rooms. So everything is sort of separated. It does help to keep the noise down from the big atrium area. And there's a nice window over here. Let me show you. What's over there, Nathan? The, this way, Cirque du Soleil and Disney Springs. As we pan over, we got some like Disney resorts like back there. I believe that should be old Key West and um, some of the Disney Springs affiliate hotels are like kind of there. And then as we start to pan, you can see Tower of Terror from MGM Studios. And then as we pan a little bit further, there's the Swan and Dolphin. And kind of behind the Swan and Dolphin is actually the reserve where we stayed before we came here. And then as you kind of keep panning, you can see a big square block with like a little globe on top. And that is Epcot. And the big square is the Guardians Coaster Building. Just think, before they built Guardians, you would have had a dead shot to Epcot. Okay, yeah. And then as we continue to pan over this way, we're going to hit um, like probably Bay Lake, whatever, Magic Kingdom is kind of over there on this side of the Contemporary, but the Contemporary is over there. And I don't know what that other big hotel is. I want to say it's one of the big non-Disney hotels that's like on that side of um, property. And we have the pool and the lake for this hotel. A lot less people than yesterday. Yeah, we explored this area yesterday. It's uh, definitely fun. Apparently the game room is supposed to be in this building right here, right there. Uh, we went past that, didn't see it. We're gonna go check that out in a little bit and see if we can find mm -hmm. out what's there. And then there's the whole other side we got to explore too. And then that's the self parking lot back there. Yep, showed them that too yesterday. But it's kind of nice to see like the aerial view. Um, there's people like out on the paddle boats paddling yeah. on the lake. I feel like it's just a little too ex too much sun exposure to be like on the water. I don't think people realize like you're gonna get a lot of sun if you're just sitting out on the water like that. So let's go see what we can find. Massive, yeah. Massive atrium setup. There's the check ins over there. Some green space, and you'll see it goes atrium style. Look at the... This reminds us of the Anaheim one that we stayed at. But it was a JW Marriott. Nice. Here is the lake house. This is their restaurant downstairs.
market. Some basic snackies. There is a gift store too in the lobby that you want to check out with some clothes and some Orlando wear. I'll go in there in a little bit. Hey, right. heading out to the pool. The joys of Florida. Pool stars. Seating, some water features. Check this out. A splash pad area. Oh, here's the pool area. Another pool area. On the back side of the pool, there is a little beach area, a little lake you can go into too, with little boat rentals and stuff. It's fascinating. I just see this on the back side, so here's the pool with the pool slide and the pool. And then there's the hotel in the distance. Interesting pool area, really packed, really, really packed. The gym is right off the pool, you sure one in. There is a bunch of treadmills. There's a bunch of treadmills. Oh, some stair climbers, ellipticals, row machines. Oh, cool. Pelotons. Fancy lifting stations. Some free weights. And then there's this thing. It is a rather large. Yeah, and some exercise balls. Wear glasses. Scale. It's pretty serious. So this is the size of that gem. It's kind of crazy big. Got a decent amount of stuff in here. Kind of big, but it is a resort, so. All right. They do some water aerobics class, yoga. And here's their whole thing. But again, it is right off of the pool area. So this is the only way that I found to get to it. It's a little weird. Wow. We're going into the cave, y'all. Alright, we're in the game room. We got some plushie machines. A claw. Da claw. Two motorcycles, two driving games. Dippin' Dots. Lily loved the Dippin' Dots yesterday. Check out that video hanging out with her. Fantastic prizes. There's only one prize. Oh, you slowly cut the rope. That's interesting. Candy crane. Ski ball. A Pac-Man Galaga game. Wow, 21st century. 
two more driving games. They really love their driving games here. And a third driving slash shooter Jurassic Park. And a Batman driving game. So whoever gets the games here loves driving games. Found a hidden game back here if you want to play some skee-ball. This is the underwater grotto area. How you have to get to the gym and to the game room. If you're staying here, this is the one I would rent. Macy agrees too. There's the QR code to book it too. Yeah. QR code. I think that's for all the cabanas, but definitely check out Q number five. What do you think? 10 out of 10. I would love to be in this one. What do you think about the game room and the gym? Game room is pitiful. The gym is a dangerous trap. Be careful. When we're, it's nice. Like the inside is nice. It's got a lot of equipment, but it's dangerous getting there. So. Yeah. And your feet are going to be soaking wet when you get there. Yep. Outside the pool area, there are some like walking trails. This resort is interesting, y'all. It's not very well planned out, it doesn't seem, and it's not very well signed either, so you don't really know where you're going. But let's see what we can find. So they do have a restaurant back here by the pools it's called Four Flamingos. And there's a little like seating area under here. And then that's the building that I was walking around a second ago, which is called Four Flamingos. Something else I've noticed is that they have these weird statues like they're just placed along the way. There's like kids in the bushes having picnics. This one's got a bird in his hand. I don't, I don't really understand it, but if you do understand the reason, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna keep investigating while we're here. All right, so we have some more random artwork. A guy playing a flute. Something else going on. And they have like a horse in the background. It reminds me of like a, and I, it reminds me of like a P.F. Chang's kind of statues. Really fascinating. But I don't really understand why. There's another guy. Maybe there used to be a different restaurant over here or something. And you definitely hear the choppers from the people who are doing those flying tours out here a lot. Investigation continues. A snake on the back of a turtle, and for some odd reason, the turtle can turn his head 360, so he's kind of owly. So, interesting. Another interesting piece of artwork, and you can see in the distance two like dragon heads. And then it kind of leads back to. I'm guessing this is like a like a peace garden, like a tranquility garden, something like that. And then it leads back to the lobby area. I still didn't find the game room, so I'm gonna keep searching. So if you hit the poles, there's a walking trail behind it that's like right adjacent to the parking lot. <laughs> this place is so confusing, y'all. I still haven't found the arcade. I've, uh, I've literally found the poles twice, but can't find the arcade. I'm gonna have to start at the beginning and like go back, but I'll figure it out. That crosses the water. And then this will lead me back to that original pool I was at when I started my expedition prior to finding the gym. So there are some pickleball courts here too. You'll see we're at the guest parking lot. The hotel is all the way over there. You see that over the trees? And then the pickleball courts are supposed to be over that way. We're not gonna go ahead all the way over there. And it looks like they do have a professional golf course too surrounding this. And there's the choppers I talked about yesterday flying over constantly. But yeah, this is the outside area. We're gonna go check out the mini golf and the basketball court. That looks like a prison. <laughs> it's not, but it looks like a prison. It does, it looks like that DeKalb prison. Right? <laughs> mini golf on the way, y'all. Mini golf on the way. All right, so here's the mini golf right there. You'll see they got the, right next to the park. And then there's the basketball court. It's like a half court, if that, with a basketball hoop. Fancy. Basketball court. And there's the golf course, the actual golf course. Now what were you saying? Oh, this just kind of makes me think of a timeshare that my parents used to have. Um, 
What is the like, timeshare here? What was it called? Like, yeah. Westgate? Yeah. My parents used to have a Westgate timeshare and it was a lot like this. Yeah, check out. Over in the distance, that's I think the pickleball courts. It might even be the building for all I know. And I'm pretty sure the golf course is separate from the hotel. And then there's the walking trail. You walk that sidewalk and apparently it walks all the way around this golf course. We showed you from the window when it goes to dirt. There's paddleboarders out there too. And there's some paddleboarders which you can rent. We showed you that yesterday. This place is massive and uh, not very well planned, not very well laid out, and very difficult to sort of navigate. And they just kind of leave the stuff out here? Well, you can collect some of that from the pole. So you can collect your putter from the pole. We showed you that yesterday too. There is a basketball just sitting out here. I can't imagine it's very pumped Inflated. yeah and there's your little basketball this is not a basketball court folks this is a half court and that's it a basketball court is two half courts just fyi people who put the hotel together we have found another meditation area on property it's like a meditation garden with some lanterns so this is the lantern stuff yeah there's nicely doing weird things and then if you look over there there's the lake there's the mini golf that we just came from. And then there's the pool behind us. Again, spacious, not really laid out. You wouldn't know this is over here unless you're wandering. Legit tip when you're walking and you're out by the pool area, if you're under an area without much trees and you're touching these metal poles, be cautious because they're getting heated up by the sun. They're probably over like 100 degrees right now. Be careful. If you are here and go into that Flamingo restaurant, this is right down the way from it. It's a nice artificial grass green space. There's Nicey, and down that way is the Flamingo. And then there's the hotel in the background. This place, y'all, is so confusing. If you follow the lobby down, here is the conference center. Bunch of rooms, Nacy on her phone. And what Nacy's here for, that's the conference center. And that is the lobby. This place is massive, y'all. Very, very massive. After fully exploring the outside of this place, ooh, my hair looks like a mess. Uh, after fully exploring the outside of this place, it is so confusing out there. We've we've gone the trails. We've, I've seen the nature area. We've explored where the gym and the game room are, which, by the way, are really really hard to find. And just, get to. Yeah, just go to the pool, and they're in the little grotto thing of the cave. If you're looking for the game room and the gym, uh, and it takes about 15 to 20 minutes of walking to get there. Uh, poorly laid out design, really confusing, and very few signs actually navigating where you're going. There's multiple Zen gardens and peaceful spaces out there. None of them are on the map. None of them are shown. And we've just randomly come across them when we're searching. If you're staying here and you're not doing a hotel review like we are, you would never know this stuff was here. Mm -mm. Because they explained absolutely nothing to us when we checked in. Yeah, they also didn't give us like uh, bands to go to the pool and stuff. So some people have them, some people don't. It's uh, an interesting hotel and very confusing. Normally when we stay at big resorts like this, they go have a whole like spiel they give you when you check in. Check out our Buttes one in Arizona or any of the Las Vegas big ones we've went to. They always have this like spew or like, they'll have a piece of paper with the information. None of that stuff is here. Yeah, so it's been interesting learning this resort because the gym's not functional at all. You have to get really wet to get there. Yeah. The the game room isn't great. It's, it's small, got a couple has, of games. has mostly driving games. But again, you got to get wet to get there. Yeah. And to get even to the pool is a journey in and of itself. So if you do decide to book this resort, just keep that in mind that you will have to do a lot of walking and a little searching to find things. And the restaurants, too, are a little bit complicated as well. It's definitely a very complicated resort. Yeah, so stick around for our final thoughts, and we'll give you some recommendations of other hotels you can stay at, as well as some tips for this hotel. Yeah, they have a lobby ambassador here. You'll hear him. <laughs> He's so cute. He just squeaked. But he, like, squawks pretty hardcore. And he is their lobby ambassador. Let's see if we can go get his face. Hi. How's it going? Very good. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's going very good. You're awesome, man. Nice to meet you. 
right past the lobby is the Marilyn Monroe Spas, which I'm not going to go back there, but they apparently have some daily specials, and it's kind of right down here, right by the Grand View Terrace. Mace is going to investigate the Marilyn Monroe Spa. And here are the hours, they are closed on Wednesday, y'all. All right, guys, it is three o'clock in the morning at this hotel. And the smoke alarm battery is out, as you guys can hear. So we just had to call the front desk. It's crazy. That concludes our stay here at the Hyatt Regency. At Grand Cypress. There's like seven Hyatt Regencies in Orlando. So keep in mind, this is the one that is Grand Cypress and it's close to Disney Springs. Yeah, that's probably the only upside to it. The shower was nice. It was, it was spacious. It was a decent shower. Difficult to operate. Kind of like the rest of the hotel. It's uh, dated and difficult. Yeah, the um, thermostat in the room consistently changes. So oh, during the nighttime, you have to like check it. So if you're somebody who's a warm sleeper, this definitely is not the room for you. Yeah, the air turns off. And then for some odd reason, the temperatures fluctuate. Once you leave the room, it'll actually raise the temperature on the thermostat for some reason. It's really Strange. weird awkward and like why are they doing this to us if you open the door to get extra airflow in here the air conditioner turns off mm -hmm. the elevators are super old they're and nice slow. looking but they're really slow like it can take i waited 20 minutes one night for an elevator to come to the eighth floor it's crazy then the outside is another absolute nightmare and mess it's chaos the map is not accurate. We'll show you them. We showed you the map earlier in this video. It's not accurate of the property. It doesn't show where the stuff is. It doesn't make any sense why they made the th decisions they did, like the game room and the gym being right next to the pool underneath like a cave thing. Really stupid and really poorly laid out. Yeah, and not only that, but the food here just isn't good. Bad. We tried the Lakeside Grill the first day we were here and it just, it didn't, it wasn't good. And it was really expensive. They do have a market, again though, really expensive. Yep. And the Starbucks that they serve in there wasn't really even quite up to Starbucks snuff. We got four drinks and it was over $40 just for four, uh, two Gatorades and two orders. Very bleh. Now I was here for a conference so I did check out the conference space. And while they had a lot of ample conference space, the amenities of the hotel for the people staying here because it was a four-day conference just wasn't quite up to snuff yeah so definitely wouldn't recommend this there's some better disney properties as well as other hotels throughout the area the gaylord and stuff like that would be a better option in my opinion uh, so definitely think about that if you're trying to choose this hotel yeah so um if you guys want to hear more about our stay here at the hyatt we will be talking about it in more detail on our podcast, Awkward Chat. So make sure you guys check out that podcast everywhere you can download a podcast. Yeah, Apple, Google, or Spotify. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And make sure you ring that notification bell so that way you get notified when we do at least three videos a week. And we'll come and get you all for the next one. Ain't that the truth, baby? Bye, everybody. Bye.